All right, guys, so today we're talking about the N-word, networking. What's up, guys? This is the Indie Minute, where I give you practical tips to help you get out of the bedroom and into making real progress in your music career. Uh, so if you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out. Uh, but today we're talking about networking. And I called it the N-word earlier because networking can be really scary if you haven't done it before. Basically, whether you're trying to meet a blogger, a DJ, or even a local booking agent at a venue in your area, uh, it can be scary because you know that the person that you're wanting to meet has a certain power uh, that can either make or break your career. And so you don't want to mess it up. It's almost like when you're plotting to ask that girl out on a date and you don't want to strike out. So today I'm going to give you three tips to help you avoid striking out and be on the right way to a long and prosperous relationship. So the first tip is to do your research. Um, whenever you're going to approach someone in the music business, uh, you want to know who they are, you want to know what they do, and what they have to offer you. Um, so if, you, if your goal is to get your song on the radio, you wouldn't want to reach out to a booking agent to do that. Uh, because the booking agent doesn't have any power at a radio station. They just book shows at the local venue. So at the same time, if I wanted to perform for a showcase, you know, that's being hosted by a venue, I wouldn't go to the radio station asking for them to hook me up at the venue. So make sure you know what the person that you're dealing with does um, and what they have to offer you so that when you approach, you can ask a very simple question and get a simple answer. So once you've done your research on who the person is, the next tip, the next step is to make sure that you approach them correctly. Uh, the biggest issue that I see uh, with artists is that they'll contact people or they'll try to contact me in a way that I don't want to be contacted. Uh, I have a business email address and I make that available for everyone. Um, I have a Facebook group. There are a lot of different ways where you can access me and you know get me one-on-one -on -one for whatever private question you have. But what I would hate is if someone maybe stumbled across my phone number and called me unsolicited or if someone uh, you know, started messaging my personal Facebook account uh, you know Basically, anybody that you're dealing with uh, in this industry, usually they're doing this as their job. And a lot of us like to keep work at work and keep home at home. And so whenever you try to cross those boundaries, it's intrusive and it can be a major turnoff. So while you're doing research about the person that you want to meet, go ahead and see if you can find out their preferred method of contact. Usually in their bio somewhere, like they're on Twitter, uh, you'll see for business inquiries, contact me at Here's the email address. Some people are cool with a phone call. Some people are cool with you tweeting. But if you're doing your research, you'll know what they're cool with and you'll be well on your way. Another tip. Once you find out their preferred method of contact, contact them that way and stick with it. Don't try to stick. Don't try to skip the line. Uh, don't try to communicate that what you have to say is more important than their normal flow of business uh, because that's just arrogant and it's a huge turnoff. <clears throat> so... Make sure that you come, approach correctly and stick with their their preferred method of approach. Uh, if you don't hear back within a certain amount of time, I say three to five days, then it's okay to send a follow-up message. Uh, if you follow up three times and they still don't answer, it's probably just because you're not really at the level where they want to respond to you. It's okay. Just keep working at it, but don't nag them. Maybe find another way or find another uh you know, way to contact them. Maybe you find someone that can introduce you to them instead. That brings me to my last tip. If you've researched the person, you know who they are, what they do, uh, you've researched their preferred method of contact and you're contacting them the right way, you want to make sure that the last part is you understand what your value proposition is. If you know what they do, you know how they can help you, and you know what they want, how they want you to contact them, then you should also know what requirements they have, you know, for them to consider even working with you. You know, if you're dealing with a booking agent, his goal is to pack out his venue each night so that he can sell drinks. So you should know that what you need to be able to approach him and talk on a good level is 
enough fans to fill out his venue. And if you don't have that, then it's time for you to make sure you take a humble approach and say, hey, you know, I wanted to play a, a show at your venue. I know I'm good for 30 fans, even though your capacity is 100. You know, maybe you have some tips. Maybe there's an artist that you know I can work with um, that can help fill up the show. But I wanted to give me give you my music and see if, if we can start a connection from there. That approach will get you a lot further than just saying, hey, man, you really need to have me at your venue. I only have 30 fans. I only have two Facebook followers, but I'm just I'm really good. My music's really good. No one's in the business to run a charity case because your music is good. Everyone who's in business has something at stake. And usually they're trying to make money or they need to make money to support their family just like you do. But if you know what you have to offer and you know what the person that you're trying to meet with, their, what their requirements are and what they need to move forward, then you'll be able to approach the conversation from a much more level playing field. So those are my three tips to help you with your networking. Uh, and that's all for today's episode. But the conversation doesn't have to stop here. Uh, you can find us on social media at KDMR Music. And we also just started a private Facebook master class group or a mastermind group where you can network with other artists, other professionals, and ask any questions that you may have, whether it's about marketing, about general music business, about tips. We've got mixing and mastering engineers. So I would encourage you to join the group, join the conversation, go ahead and introduce yourself. Other than that, I'll see you next week for another Indie Minute. Peace.